check, check. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth his righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and plenteous in mercy he will not always chide neither will he keep his anger forever he hath not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him as far as the east is from the west so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pity of his children, so the Lord pity of them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flower, fl flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we come before you today, Lord, on the Sabbath day, asking for your forgiveness of sins, Lord. Asking for you to bless the brothers and sisters that's laboring in this truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Also protect the brothers and the sisters that's on the quest, that's traveling the islands to teach thy word, Lord. Protect the brothers and sisters that's in Puerto Rico, that's out there teaching thy word, Lord. Lord, also the brothers and sisters amongst us that's sick, heal them. Heal them, heal their mind, heal their body, heal their spirit. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 
Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Salute down, face sisters, and to the honorable daughters of Sarah, our mothers, we say shalom. Hey, shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Shalom to brothers and sisters online, too. Happy Sabbath. You know, um, a lot of things been going on out here, been going on out throughout the world, man. A lot of things, you know. Prophecy being fulfilled. We seen wars and rumors of wars. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to keep us in the same chain of thought that the bishop was in last week. All right? The bishop, he went over Revelation 9. You know, that same chain of thought, I'm going to try to keep us in that same chain of thought. All right? So, um, the topic I'm going to go be going over is called Jacob Trouble, World War III. Um, before I go into that, I want to touch on some things. Because a lot of things going on, going on throughout the planet Earth, man. A lot of things. If you brothers and sisters, if you all, if you all in La La Land still, if if you all still questioning the things that you all that you all reading in these scriptures, something wrong. You know, hey, play them two videos for me. I sent I send you two videos. Play them two videos for me. Play. It doesn't matter. After a magnitude 6.4 earthquake hit Puerto Rico earlier this week, the most powerful in more than a century, 50% of the island doesn't have power. There are more than 2,000 refugees and some 300 damaged homes, primarily in the southern part of Puerto Rico, near the epicenter. The most heavily affected areas are Guayanilla, Guanica, Sabana Grande, Yauco, Ponce, and Peñuelas. Some residents have been sleeping outside their homes, in tents, shelters, or on the ground, in fear of another earthquake collapsing their houses. Tuesday's earthquake is only the latest in a series of quakes that began to shake the island late December. The Costa Sur power plant, which provides about a quarter of the electricity in the island, will take at least a year to repair, according to Puerto Rico's Power Authority CEO, Jose Ortiz. But the power plant's operation manager said otherwise. One I, month. I Puerto Rico there. still hasn't I keep on playing, keep on fully playing. recovered from 2017's Hurricane Maria, which oh. destroyed much of the island's infrastructure. And the electrical grid, built in the 1970s, badly needed repairs, even prior to Hurricane Maria. An external audit in 2016 right, included so Puerto Rico's power... Cut that off. Play the other video. So you all see what's going on in Puerto Rico. You know, that earthquake, it hit Puerto Rico this week. That's what's going on in Puerto Rico. You understand? But the way how the most I work, it just happened that, you know, the prophets of God is over in Puerto Rico right now. You know what I mean? That's where all, the captains and them is over there. We, You know, the brothers and, and the brothers is over there. And, you know, you know, they bringing the word to the people. You know what I mean? So the brothers and sisters is in Puerto Rico right now teaching. You know, opening the people's minds to why these things is happening. So that's what's that's what's happening in Puerto Rico. All right. So let's see the other video. Firefighters are racing to save the wildlife amid those wildfires still raging. The staggering toll we've been reporting on here now an estimated billion animals lost. ABC's meteorologist Ginger Z is still in the fire zone for us tonight. So pause tonight as firefighters. So there is a raging fire that's burning in Australia, man. They say at least a billion animals was killed. That's what they estimated. Over a billion animals was killed. This is going on in Australia right now. Right now, this is what's going on in Australia. 
Read on. I mean, read on. Keep on playing the video. In Australia, battle flames that have scorched 15 million acres. An ecological emergency is unfolding. That so, terrifying so this says estimate it's an that economical one... emergency. Re Keep on playing. One billion animals have now been lost. Australia's wild animals desperate for water. Now, volunteers are stepping up any way they can. You can tell she's very stressed. An ecologist treating these baby wallabies in her home. You are right. These teens filling their truck with koalas that they found where their family's home once stood. <coughs> Veterinarians from the Australian Army treating many of them at this wildlife hospital. What we're finding is that there's often these isolated populations. And so if a fire does move through that, instead of taking a few from a large gene pool, it unfortunately can take out an entire population. We have seen plenty of surviving animals inside these burnt out forests that flank the entire drive down to Sydney. But here's the problem. Just like the people that live in the areas that have not yet burnt, there are animals that will be susceptible too when conditions deteriorate again on Friday. David? Those images so difficult. Ginger's here, thanks to you again tonight. All right, so that's what's going on in Australia. All right, in Puerto Rico, you got earthquakes over in Puerto Rico. In Australia, you got raging fires killing Killing over a billion animals, a lot of people losing their house and so forth. So what's going on? What's going on? Why all these things is happening? You know, and the earthquake wasn't just in Puerto Rico. It, is, it was in a couple of the other islands too. They feel aftershocks and so forth. You know, so um, I want you to go to Isaiah 29 and verse 6. So, so we got we to gotta be able to bring forth these answers and show the people why these things is happening. You know, that's our jobs. We must be able to go into the scriptures and show the people why is these things happening. You know, they said in 2017, you know, um, Puerto Rico is still recovering from that hurricane that hit that country. Why are these things happening? Read that scripture for me. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. And what? And flame of devouring fire. So the scripture says we going to be visited of the Lord of hosts with what? Read it again from the top. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake. And with earthquake. That's that earthquake you all saw took place in Puerto Rico. That's the most High God visiting the earth. Okay, read on. And great noise with <laughs> storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. So that flame of devouring fire that you are seeing taking place in Australia, guess what? That's God visiting the earth. All right? From there, go to Second Ezra 9, verse 1. That's God visiting the earth, man. You all pay attention to what's going on. You know, pay attention to what you see, go, what's going on throughout the world right now, man. We're living in a serious time. We're living in the end. We're living in the end of days, man. You know, we're living in a very serious time. You all do not get caught up in social media. All of that is a distraction to keep you all in la-la land. You know, I was watching the news the other day. I'm watching the news like, you know, the regular news. And they ain't telling me nothing that's what's really going on around the world, man. Yeah, they're just talking about a bunch of dumb stuff. You know, and that's how they keep the, the American public mind, how to say, clueless to what's going on. You know, but read that scripture for me. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world. So the Mosai is starting to visit the world. Read on. Wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. So it says, the scripture says, when you see earthquakes and when you see uproar of the people in the world, that's the most I start back to visit the earth that he created, the world that he created. 
When you see uproar amongst the people, doesn't we see uproar today amongst the people? Yes, we see uproar, up, uproars amongst the people. Doesn't we see, don't we, don't we be seeing a bunch of earthquake taking place? Yes. So it says that what? Read that again. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Okay, so the Most High, the Most High, been all, from the beginning, the Most High been speaking that these things is going to come to pass in the last days. And we living in this time and we seeing it come to pass. You know, we living in these times and we seeing these things coming to pass. You know, so you brothers and sisters, pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Okay? Now, from there, I'm going to go to Psalms 2 and 1. Psalms 2 and 1. I want to show you all something before I get into the topic. Psalms 2 and 1. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So the scripture says, why do the heathen rage? All right. Why do the heathen rage? Question. Haven't, haven't the heathens been raging for, for, for months now against, against the Israelites? Going on a year now, the heathens been raging against us, man. You know, BBC News, Fox News. You know, they've been raging against us, trying to label us what? A hate group. You understand? So read that one more time again. Psalms 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And the people imani imani imagine a vain thing. The people here is talking about Israel. You know what I mean? The wicked of our people. Wicked, even wicked Israelites. You understand? The vain thing that they imagine is what? Keep on reading. Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves... And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. The vain thing that they imagine is that they could take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. The Lord, our Lord is who? Is Christ. And his anointed is who? Is those of us that's following after Christ. We are the anointed. The Israelites that keep in the commandments in the faith of Christ. We are the anointed. Read on. Let us break their bands asunder. So this is what they are saying. This is what they want to do. They want to break our bands asunder. What does what our bands is? What does the bands mean? The bands is the camp. The organizational structure. You understand? IUIC. They want that gone. You understand? They want that. That's their band, meaning they group. They want to destroy us. That's why that's why they start um they start putting certain label on us. You know, they that's what they want to do. So the heathens, and not just the heathens, but Israel, it says this is what going through their mind. It happened to the apostles and them in the past. And guess what, brothers? It's happening to us today, right now. Read on. Let us break their bands asunder. And cast their cords away from us. And cast their cords away from us. The cords is what? The cords is our teaching. The cords is the teachings of Christ. They don't want to hear that. The same way our forefathers in the past, they don't want to hear it. The same way all the heathens in the past, they don't want to hear it. It's the same thing today. You know what I mean? They don't want to hear the truth of the Bible. They don't want to hear that we are the real Jews. Society don't want to hear that. You know, when you bring out Revelation 2 and 9, the Jewish man don't want to hear that he not the real Jew. You know what I mean? They don't want to hear that. You understand? That's why they said they don't want to hear that Christ is black. That's why they said, let us what? Let us break their bands asunder. That's why they want to destroy us. Read on. And cast away their cords from us. And cast away what? Our, our teaching. Our cords is our teaching. They want, uh, they want that to stop. You understand? They want the teachings that we teach to stop. 
That's why they are labeling our teachings hate speech. That's what they are labeling our teaching as hate speech. Or what? And they're also removing our videos off of YouTube. They're right. That's, right. That's what they're doing. You know, it's, it says, let, let us take their cords away from us. We don't want to hear what they're talking about. We don't want to hear what them Israelites talking about. That's why you got the wicked, um, the heathens and them is raging doing that. And we got wicked Israel doing that too. You understand? We got wicked Christians doing that too. We got wicked Muslims. All of them fall into the same category. You know, that's what they saying. That's what running through their mind. Let's get rid of these Negroes in purple. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what running through their mind. But keep on reading. Verse 4. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. It says, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. Let me show you all something, right? Now, these last couple months, these last, this last couple years, we've been under serious attack by the Southern Poverty Law, um, by, by the news media, you know, um, uh, we, by traders amongst us, you understand, by Judases. You know, this last couple of years, we've been under serious attack. You understand? And to tell, you, tell, to tell you all the truth, what we've been through, it made us stronger. You know what I mean? All the brothers, on, uh, all the brothers that survived that, they're on another level. You know what I mean? All of us that survived that, all that onslaught that was coming at us, it, it teaches us how to war. So now, some things are not going to happen again amongst us, man. Now we, we understand what, what this, you know, we understand what mistakes we don't make. You see, and so that's what the that's what the Lord teaching us. If you if you are that goal, when you go through that fire, you going and you go through that fire, it gonna make you stronger. You understand? It's not gonna burn you up like these brothers and sisters that you see bug up and left up out of here. But my point is this: in everything that you saw, they was doing these last couple months. You even had the presidents of the United States of America sign. Uh, um, executive order stating that Judaism, Judaism, which is a religion which the Jewish people come um, follow, that that is a nationality. We even had them go so far of doing that this um, couple weeks ago. You understand why? Because the truth that we've been teaching, it been it's affecting people on this earth, man. It's affecting this earth. It's affecting this world. You know, so now they slandering us and they calling us terrorists, homegrown terrorists and all of that. You understand? But what does the scripture says? Read that again. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. It says God is going to laugh at them. <laughs> God said, yo, you see what they trying to do to, to my prophets? <laughs> the most I laughing at them. You know, hear them. Here is, here is the nations, the heathens, and the, and, and the Israelites trying to destroy the prophets of the Most High. You know, the, the Lord is laughing at them. Read on. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. He says, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. Read on. The Lord shall have them in derision. In derision, the word derision means mockery. Mockery or what? A mockery, it means mockery or it mean or ridicule. You understand? What does that mean? Let me show you all what take place. Those of you all that paying attention, this is what happened. This is what happening. Now, Esau, they focus on us. They focus on us. They're trying to label us hate group. They're trying to label us terrorists. You understand? They're trying to accuse of us, accuse of accuse us of murdering people and so forth what you all see took place in jersey they're trying to accuse us accuse us for that and look what the lord did the lord said i'm gonna raise up the real terrorists and them i let you all see what time it is that's why the lord said i'm going he's gonna he's gonna mock them he's gonna laugh at them you know while they're trying to do what they're doing to destroy us the lord says i'm gonna laugh at them because 
the Lord already know what he got planned. You know? The most I got our back, brothers, and you all got to see that. In everything that was going on these couple weeks, you all see what ended up happening? Bush, the, the most I put the spirit on um, Trump to go and, and murder the second highest, the general of another country. You understand? The Lord put the spirit on Trump to do that. Y'all don't give Trump no credit for that. You know what I mean? Don't give no. The most I put the spirit on Trump to do that, man. You understand? So the most I say, I'm going to show you who the real terrorist is. You want to label my prophets terrorists? Okay, I'm going to show you who the real terrorist is. That's why the scripture says the Lord is going to laugh at them. He's going to laugh at them. So you brothers, y'all don't worry, man. Don't worry. The most I got this whole battle plan. You understand? So that's it on that. No, keep on reading. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. So it says the Lord, he's going to speak unto them in his wrath. Read on. And vex them in his sore displeasure. And he going to vex them in his sore displeasure. He going to vex them with what? He going to vex them with, with, with these plagues that is coming here. These terrorists that is already planted here in Babylon. Okay? So from there, go to, go to Proverbs. Proverbs 21 and 1. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1. So Trump uh, 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 assassinated the top Persian general. You understand? The, the, the second in command in Persia, because that's who Iran is. Iran is the Persians. You know, a couple, couple years ago, they went to the international committee and they changed their name. I think it was in 1970. I ain't too sure. Well, they went and changed their name from Persia to Iran. You understand? But the Persians is the ancient Iran. Okay, so um, so read Proverbs 21 and 1 for me. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So the king's heart meaning the king's mind, that is in the heart of the Lord, in the hand of the Lord. You understand? Whatever decision Trump's make and so forth, don't think he's doing that on his own. Is God, God putting the spirit on him to do that? You know? Like, I don't know. Ever since he got into office, I know what's something special about that dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> I always feel like there's something special about that dude. I, I've been praying, is he the one? Is, is he the one to set it off? You know, because you know he's a very arrogant guy and he really don't care what nobody say. You know, that's why I, that's why I like that dude. You know what I mean? A lot of you all be like, I hate Trump, I hate Trump, I hate... Listen, that dude, I like him. I think there's something special about him. He might be... He might be the one that God is going to use to start this World War III. You know what I mean? Don't worry about what he's doing to our brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Because guess what? Even God allowed him to do that, to oppress our people. Why? Because a lot of, a lot of you all under Obama administration, you all went to sleep. You know, you all got comfortable. So the Lord said, you know, I'm going to send this tyrant to shake you all up. Build a wall. Build a wall. You got, yep, get young Mexican kids and um, our, brother, our, our brothers from the tribe of Ezekiel got the, got the little kids and them in, um, in de detained in, in, in bad facilities and so forth. You know, you think our people, when they're going through these things, what do you think going to happen? The scripture says, in your affliction, you're going to seek me. So that's why the most I put, uh, um, that's why I put Trump in office. He put him in office to tighten things down on our people because you have been too comfortable under Obama administration. You know, Obama lied to you. You know, he, you know with them presidents that say one thing and do things behind, yeah. Like he legalized homosexuality, all these things. You know, um, everybody mad at Trump. 
concerning the um, immigration laws and, and the deportees and so forth that he's been sending back to these, di to, to these different um, countries. But Obama set up all these things. He, you know what I mean? Trump just, he just um, spearheading the things that Obama did already set up. But anyways, let me go back to where I was at. Read that again for me. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So y'all don't be mad at Trump, man. Let him do what God called him to do. You understand? It's something special about that dude, man. You know, he just he just he just started World War Three. He didn't hear us yet, but what he did in it initiated it. You understand what I'm saying? It's not here as yet, but it's on its way. But as I go through the class, you're all going to see certain things. You understand? So the scripture says the what? Read that again. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Read on. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So the most I going to turn whatever president in this country, whatever leader in, on this earth, he's going to turn them turn their heart to do what he want them to do. You understand? So what you see, what you all saw took place last week when um, Trump ordered the assassination and murder of that Persian general, Sal Salalami. I would say <laughs> Samala. <laughs> Can't even pronounce his damn name. So Yeah. You know, that dude, that in Trump doing that, man, listen. You know, in Trump doing that, it 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 um it changed up a lot of things. You understand what I'm saying? It changed up a lot of things. So from there, I want you to go to t Isaiah 34 and 16. Isaiah 34 and 16. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. So the scripture says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And read. This is what you brothers and sisters got to do. You can't, a, a lot of y'all be reading this book and that book and you're reading the Quran and no, the scripture says, seek ye out of what? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says, seek out ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The book of the Lord is the Bible. You understand? You ain't finding no prophecy concerning world events in no Quran, man. You ain't going to find it in no other book but the book of the Israelites. You understand? Because this book right here is our history. Is our laws, our history, and prophecies. You know what I mean? When the prophecies come to pass, the prophecies become history. Like Deuteronomy 28, when that was written, it didn't come to pass as yet. It was a prophecy. But once we came over here on them cargo slave ships and so forth, it became history. You understand? So it's no other book on this planet that we could go to and learn our history and learn prophecies and see this, this is what's going to come to pass in the future. It's no other book. You know, so the scripture says what? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says, seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Read on. No one of these shall fail. Everything that's written in the Bible, it's going to come to pass. Everything. You understand? It says that we're going to go into slavery on ships. Didn't we go into slavery on ships? Yes. It says Christ would have come and died for our sins. Did he come and die for our sins? Yes. It says that he's going to return and in righteousness he's going to judge and make war. Guess what? He's coming back and do that. It's going to come to pass. The Bible says, it says none of these shall fail. Meaning everything written inside here is going to come to pass, man. Everything. You know? So from there, go to... um. Go to... 
Second Ezra 15. You know, before you read that, let me get Romans 3. So what if some don't believe? The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? So what if some of you all don't believe that, that um, Christ is going to return? So what if some of you all don't believe that the Lord is visiting the earth? That's why all these earthquakes is taking place. That's why all these um, storms is taking place. All these hurricanes is taking place. So what if you don't believe that the Lord, that the Lord is visiting the earth? So what if you don't believe that you are an Israelite? You know, so what if you don't believe because you have some brothers and sisters, they don't believe. And how you could tell they don't believe by their actions. If you see these things going on and you and you still here arguing and strifing and holding on to grudges against your brother, you don't believe. And holding on to grudges against your sisters, you don't believe, man. Read on. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Should your unbelief make the Bible don't come to come to pass? No. It's going to still come to pass and you're going to die in your unbelief, man. You know, from there, go to, go to where you go to 2nd second, second Ezra 15 and 1. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the, pro the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth. So that's what, we, that's what we be doing. You understand? As I said, once the prophecy come to pass, it become history. You understand? And that's what the bishop been doing for years. You know, he been teaching us, on, teaching us these prophecies. And we see these prophecies coming to pass. Okay? Read that again. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. They are what? They are faithful and true. Meaning these prophecies gonna come to pass. They are faithful and true. They gonna come to pass. Read on. Fear not the imaginations against thee. So the God says, don't fear the imaginations against you. A lot of time when you see certain things coming against you, sometimes you get scared. You feel what I'm saying? But the Lord said, don't be afraid of the imaginations against you. Everything that people imagine to do you, don't be afraid. You understand? For over a year now, they've been imagining all type of evil against us. You understand? They're trying to label us a hate group. They, they labeling the Bible, the teachings that we teach, hate speech. You understand? They lying and they slandering us. You feel me? For over a year now, that's what they've been doing. But God says what? Read that again. Fear not the imaginations against thee. It says don't fear the imaginations against you. You know what I mean? They label us a terrorist Homegrown terrorists. That's what they're trying to label us. That's why they put that foolish, that, that thing that just took place in Jersey, they try putting it on us. And we don't teach violence. We don't teach to go there and hurt nobody. But they're trying to put it on us. Why? Because they want to stop. They want to break our bands asunder and they want to take away the courts from amongst us. They want this teaching to stop. That's what they want. You know? Read on. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. It says, let not the what? Incredulity of them trouble thee. Incredulity. <laughs> Incredu uh, incredulity. Come on, let me read it myself, man. <laughs> I'm listening to you. It says, I don't know, Deacon. Fear not the imagination against thee, and let not the incredulity. Incredulity. Yeah, incredulity of them trouble thee. The incredulity mean um, their unbelief. You understand? Don't let the unbelief of them trouble you. Meaning brothers and sisters that don't believe, don't let that bother you. Brothers and sisters bug up and leave up out of here they don't believe. God says don't let that bother you. You see? Read on. 
For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Because they're going to die in their unfaithfulness, man. You know, they going to die in their unbelief. Unfaithful mean unbelief. You know, faith and belief, them two words go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Faith and belief, it goes hand in hand. Your belief is your faith. You know? So the scripture says they going to die in their unbelief. Those brothers and sisters that hate this Bible, that reject this Bible, that you put this Bible to the side and you go back into the world, the scripture says you're going to die in your unbelief, okay? Because everything we're reading, it's going to come to pass. Everything we read, it came to pass, right? All, all them prophecies that Moses gave us that are going to come to pass concerning us, it came to pass. We've been destroyed as a people. We hear this day in the land of our captivity. You know? Everything, everything Moses written of, about us came to pass. You know? Read on. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So the Lord said he going to bring, he going to bring, he going to bring plagues upon the world, man. You know? He going to bring plagues upon the world. And that's what you all see taking place right now. Read on. Verse 6. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me. And the souls of the just complain continually. So it says that the what? The souls of the just complain continually. It says the soul of the just complain continually. Read on. And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to read verse, read verse 8 again. Verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. So remember when you read Psalms 83, it says, Hold not thy tongue, O Lord. All right? Because the most I've been holding his tongue for a while, for all the, <clears throat> all the evil that been been happened to, uh, been going on on this earth, that, been, that they've been doing to our people. In Isaiah, in, in Psalms 83, it says, Hold not thy peace, O God. You know what I mean? Hold not thy tongue. We're going to come the time when the Mosai is not going to hold his tongue no more. You understand? Read on. Verse 9. And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So the Mosai says he's going to do what? I will, I will what? surely avenge them. God says he's going to avenge us. He's going to avenge us, brothers and sisters. For every evil that you see is being done to our people and that was done to our people in the past, God say he's going to avenge us. You understand? I don't know what Bible these, these Christians be reading. So God says he's going to avenge us and he's going to what? I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. And he's going to receive all the innocent blood. You see all the innocent blood that was shed in this country. All the innocent blood that's been shed on this earth, God says he's going to avenge that. He will avenge that. So you all better believe that. Okay, read on. Verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Which blood he's going to avenge the blood of his people? Who is his people? The Israelites. Read on. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So the Lord said he's not going to suffer us now to dwell in the land of Egypt. All right? Is, keep on reading. Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So what is this talking about? It says that, it says that, but I will bring them with a, with a mighty hand and with stretch forth arm and smite Egypt as, as before. Is this talking about ancient Egypt? 
Did we go back into ancient Egypt and they got smite with plagues all over again and so forth? Okay, so we know this is not talking about ancient Egypt. So what is this talking about? Who is this talking about? When is this talking about? Are we to go to go to Revelation eleven and eight? A lot of time, like when you read this, Exodus fifteen, it was talking about the past, but guess what? It's also talking about the future. A lot of the scriptures is double. You know, that's what the scripture said, right? It's double, man. It's double in understanding. Is the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So this great city is America. You understand? That's who this great, this great city is America, which is spiritually called what? which spiritually is called Sodom. And the reason why it says they're dead bodies is because our people is here in a dead state of mind. You understand? We are in a dead state of mind. You know? We don't know who we are. We call ourselves um, West Indians. We call ourselves Americans, Afro-Americans, um, Egyptologists, all type of dumb terms. We, we are dead we are in a dead state of mind in this, in, in this place, Babylon, man. You understand? So the scripture says that their dead body shall what? Which spiritual, uh, verse 8, and their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city. In the streets of the great city, which is Babylon the great, the abomination of the earth, which is America, read on. Which spiritually is called Sodom. And this place is spiritually called Sodom, why? Because, uh, because this place legalized homosexuality. You understand? You got the LGBTQTRV. You know, the alphabet gang. I call them the alphabet gang, man. Because they like a gang. They like the mafia. You say something against them, people, they coming for you. You know, they beating you down and all of that. You know, so, you know, you got the, uh, they got the alphabet gang here in Babylon. You understand? They push that thing hard, you know? And this is the first place where homosexuality was legalized. Now you got they legalizing it in Jamaica. You got them legalizing it all over the islands, all over, all over in Europe and all these places. But this place was the first place for that thing to be legalized. And it was legalized under the first black president. Okay? <laughs> That's his legacy. Read. But guess what? Don't be mad. Imagine if he didn't do that. Then this prophecy wouldn't become what? History. You understand what I'm saying? So this, what we just read here is history. Because it came to pass. There's no more prophecies. So read that again. Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So America is spiritually called Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt. Why Egypt? Because what? Because the Israelites is enslaved here in America. The Israelites was here serving slavery in America. That's why, Amer that's why it referred to America as Egypt. Because the word Egypt is synonymous to what? The house of bondage. You understand? The Israelites and them serve slavery, is serving slavery here in Babylon, in that great city, in America. You understand? That's why this place is spiritually called Egypt. So when you go back, when you go back to Second Ezra, go back and read that for me again. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Okay, not that um, where you left off at. Yeah. Verse 10. Verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. And smite Egypt with 
plagues as before. So the Mosai said he's going to bring us forth with a stretched forth arm. You understand? And he's going to smite Egypt with plagues. The Egypt here is not talking about ancient Egypt. The Egypt here is talking about America. Okay? Now let me get... um. Let me get Revelation 18. You know what? Before you go to Revelation 18, go to Jeremiah 16 and, and uh, verse 14. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall be no more, that it shall no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought it up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So it no more gonna be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the Israelites from the land of Egypt. That's not gonna be said no more. But read on. But the Lord liveth that brought it the children of Israel from the land of the north. From the land of where? From the land of the north. The land of, of the north is talking about what? North America. You understand? That's what he's talking about. North America. The great city that we read in Revelation 11 and 8. You understand? North America. Why? Because the Israelites is enslaved in the land of the north. Okay? So from there, go to the other scripture I'll tell you to get for me. So Revelation 18. Yeah, Revelation 18. No, first go back to 2nd Ezra and read that again. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So the Lord said he's going to smite Egypt with plagues as like before. Okay? Now go to Revelation 18 and start at verse 1. This is the book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. He says, Babylon the great is fallen. What's Babylon the great? Babylon the great is that great city. Babylon the great is Egypt that we just read. You understand? That's what Babylon the great is. Okay, read on. And he, cried with a, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. So that great city is destroyed. That great city, America, is destroyed because that's the term today for this place. In the Bible, America is referred to as Egypt, Assyria, um, Babylon, the daughter of Babylon. Um, give me some more terms. There's a lot of different terms America is referred to. The golden city. The golden city. Babylon the great. You understand? All, all these different terms, terminologies, terms that is used in the Bible to refer to America. You understand? The house of the thief. <laughs> you know, all these is different terminology that's used to describe America. You know, so let's see what, um, so read, read that, um, read that again, Revelation 18 and 1. Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and, be, and has become the habitation of devils. So Babylon is destroyed. America is destroyed. That's what the John the Revelator, Revelation, the Revelator is seeing here. All right? So jump to verse 4. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So who is God people and what is God people doing in Babylon? We know this is not ancient Babylon it's talking about here. But what is God people doing in Babylon? Because at this point of time, who was ruling under us? Who was ruling over us? The Romans was ruling over us at this point of time. You know, so John the Revelator, he saw a vision and he saw the Israelites 
in Babylon, in, in Mystery Babylon the Great. He saw what people here in America. Okay? So read that one more time again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Why? Because this is the house of bondage. Because this place is the land of our captivity. What were we doing here? We was brought here as slaves. Okay, read on. That ye be not partakers of her sins. And to come out from her, does it mean to jump on a plane and leave the country? No, it ain't talking about that. It ain't talking about jumping in a plane and leaving the country. Because any country you go to, America got is, is, is um, politics, is um, what do you call that thing? The policies. America policies is all over this earth. You understand? So some, some people going to talk about, oh, I'm going to this place and live. I'm running here to avoid the destruction and so forth. When you talk like that, that means you ain't got no faith. Because the scripture tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen when Christ return? You're going to be delivered. When the destruction come, what's going to happen? You're going to be delivered. You're going to be saved. And I'm going to touch on that later on. You know, when that destruction come, you're going to be saved. So for you to run and say you're going to another country, what are you trying to do? You're trying to save yourself. you saying the Lord ain't going to save me. You know, that's weak faith. Okay. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that you receive not of her plagues. You all understand this, man. It's plagues coming here to America. You understand? It's terrorist activity. It's fire coming here. It's all type of destructions and so forth coming here to America, coming here to Babylon. You understand? The scripture says, come out from amongst her and touch not the unclean thing. What is the unclean thing? The unclean thing is Christmas. The unclean thing is Easter. The unclean thing is, give me some birthdays. The unclean thing is, is baby showers. You know, the unclean thing is, is all these different paganism that they got set up. Mother's the, Day. Huh? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. You understand? Father's Day. All these pagan holidays that they got set up is unclean. The scripture says, and touch not the unclean thing. The unclean thing is going into his politics. That's unclean. You talking about you going and vote and all of that. That's unclean. You understand? The, give me some more unclean thing. His democracy, his politics, his religion, Christianity. That's unclean. LGBTQ warriors. That's unclean. <laughs> you know, the alphabet gangsters. That's unclean. <laughs> now, I got to say that because they will beat you down. They coming for you, man. They like gangsters. You know, for real. Them LGBTQ alphabet dudes, man. They bad, man. You know, they bad. You know, they coming for you. You know? <laughs> so... That's unclean. These unclean things, God said for us not to touch them, man. We can't be touching these things and getting caught up in them. You know? That's why the scripture said, love not the world, neither the thing that are in the world. That's what? That's the unclean things here in Babylon. So the scripture says, touch not the unclean things and we, go and, and we would not receive of her plagues. I already tell you, brothers and sisters, this plagues coming here to Babylon. What you see that president did, it's, it's, it's a lot of destruction and plagues that are going to be coming here. As a, and as I, as I tell you all, it's just the beginning. You know what I mean? It, this is just the beginning that just takes place. It might not happen right now. It might take a couple months for them to get themselves together. Or it might take a couple years. But they are, it is coming. The scripture we just read that none of these shall fail. Nothing that's written in this Bible is going to fail. It says, come out from amongst my people and touch not the unclean thing that you receive none of the plagues that's coming here. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. 
a um officer, you know, you pull up that article because it says that we receive of none of the plagues that's coming here to America. So look at this article that was just came up on New York Post. This is what they're doing in uh, the country. This is they have this flyer posted to the students. So what you're going to see. This is concerning terrorism that's going to happen to this country. It's on the uh, online request. Yo, in London and these countries, we saw that was taking place over there. You remember that bombing oh, that he, took place, I think, two years ago? When he drove the bus into the... Yeah, into like a truck. party or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these is the things that's yeah. going, on in, going on, man. So it says, flyers recruiting suicide terrorists to attack U.S. distributed in Iran. Scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down so I can read it real quick, real quick. Students at Iran's Islamic Azad University are being offered a novel new career choice. Suicide terrorists. Leaflets are being distributed. Leaflets, leaflets, leaflets. thank you, sorry. <laughs> leaflets are being distributed at the influential school urging students to sign up for jihad missions against the United States and Israel to avenge the death of Iranian General Qassam Soleimani. Registration for volunteers to commit a suicide attack against the United States and Israel, it blares. Hard revenge is underway for those criminals who killed Qasim Soleimani. The flyer claiming to quote the words of the Iranian Supreme Leader, Officer Liam, help me out. Ayatollah Ali Al Khamenei Al Khamenei carries additional messages of encouragement, including "kill all infidels." Now, watch this. Anyone looking to volunteer for the mission is asked to leave their first name and last name, birth certificate number, education level, current occupation, phone number, and fill in an area marked. Tell us about your talents. <laughs> hey, so, hey, for those of you all that don't understand. <laughs> We are infidels too. <laughs> they, they they trying to kill us too. Just right, understand right, that. Right. They don't right. care. They don't care. They just want a high a high body count. Right. You understand? Right. So like the prophecy says, we won't receive any of the plagues if we remain faithful to the Most High's word. The Most High's going to keep us safe. Cuz remember that shooting that happened in Orlando where he went into the club, right. shot up everybody, and he said all blacks and Hispanics leave. And he just shut up. <laughs> so, Lord's will, the Most High protects us. Lord's will, the Most High protects us. Right. Remember, Dave Chappelle did a comedy. He said, um, he said, the terrorists, if they, he said, terrorism ain't good. Terrorists are not going to kidnap black people because if they call the president, they're going to say, uh, Mr. President, we have five black. Hello? 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 So, uh, Lord's will, we remain safe and faithful. Yeah, they're like, yo. Yeah, Trump going to be like, yo, kill them, kill them. We don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> you know, because you know they got that policy they don't negotiate with terrorists. You know, so they go, you know, but if, if it's an either my person, they're going to try to find some way to rescue that person and so forth. But Jake, they're going to be like, yo, do what you got to do to him, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, so it's plagues coming here to Egypt. It's plagues coming here to America. It's plagues coming here to Babylon, man. You feel what I'm saying? And as the article that you just put up, they show you they are, they are recruiting. And guess what, brothers and sisters? They are already nas um, Iranian nation, nas nation American, American Iranis that was born here. And you know what I mean? And grew up here. They just... and. And some of them was just growing up and they probably didn't really, they ain't had no bond with their homeland. You know, they grew up as American. But when they see things like this happen, what do you think going to happen? You understand? So, from there, go back to go back to 2 Ezra 15. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So the Most High going to deliver us and he's going to smite Egypt with plagues like before. You understand? Read on. And will destroy all the land thereof. And he's going to destroy this place. 
You know, ain't nobody going to be dwelling in this place after the Lord finished with it. You know, this place going to be a wasteland. Read on. Verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that God shall bring upon it. They that, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through blasting and hail, and with the fearful constellation. Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh. For the sword and destruction it draweth near. As I said, it ain't near, it ain't near as yet, but it's drawing near. Is a bunch of stuff going to play out that this Bible talk about that have to play out before Christ's return. That's why I tell you all, World War III, it ain't start as yet. But steps is, the, the Lord is putting steps in place, getting ready for it to start. You know what I mean? It's certain destruction and plagues and certain things got to take place before World War III even start. You know? Read on. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. So it says one people shall stand up to fight against another. Read on. And swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing sedition amongst men and we're seeing countries invading each other. All right. Read on. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Read that part again. They shall not what? They shall not regard their kings nor princes. It says they shall not regard their kings nor princes. Meaning what? That dude Salamani, right? He was a prince. He was a general. Did America regard that? Now, they killed him. He was a very bad guy. He was a very bad guy. Nobody cared about him. He had to go. We, we had to kill him. He was a very bad guy. He's a monster. No, he's dead. You know, I had to kill him. No, he's dead. That's why I say it's something special about Trump, man. I'm telling you. You know, he talking about just murdering a dude. And you like, everybody, that's why the whole country is like, yo, this dude is... You know, I'm telling you, why? Because God is pushing Trump to do certain things to prepare World War III. You know, now you got all these Edomites running around. What the? What he just did? What Trump just did? You have people running around shock, shock, what, shock um, concerning what Trump just did. But they don't understand that God is dealing with Trump. Can we say that? Yeah, God is dealing with Trump. He's pushing, he's using him. To do what he want him to do. Yeah, we read it early on. The king's hand is in the hand of the Lord. Okay? So, it says that what? Read that again one more time. For there shall be sedition among men. Right. And, and invading one another. Right. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. So, they ain't going to regard their kings nor princes. And that's what the Arab kings and princes starting to realize. Is that this is that Egypt, Babylon, they don't care about them. They're going to kill them if they have to. They're going to assassinate them if they have to. That's what they seeing, and that's what, that's what Trump did to Salamani, to the, to the Persian, Persian prince. He was a Persian prince, second, se the top military dude in Persia. You know what I mean? So read on. Verse 17. Now, keep, finish, finish the verse off. Some of us, I want to get out of it. Uh, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Meaning what? America said, listen. Trump said, listen. I got 52 targets. So do something. Do something. I dare you. That's power right there, man. For you to assassinate the prince and then tell the other country, listen, man, I kill your dude and you better don't do nothing. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I, I'm going to kill all of you. You know, I'm just letting you know. You know, so that's power right there. That's why the scripture says what it says. Say that again. Read that again. Read that last part again. 
They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their action shall stand in their power. And the course of their action, what's their action? Not regarding kings, their kings or prince, is going to stand in their power, meaning they got power. You understand? Meaning they do what they want. They ain't got to... They ain't got to respond to nobody. You see? So from there, no, keep on reading, keep on reading. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Yo, Trump said, man, you should have stayed in Persia. You should have never leave Persia and come to Iran. That's what he told. That's what he told the dude after he killed him. <laughs> Read on. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and the men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods, because of the lack of bread, and for great tribulation. That's what's going to take place over there. Read on. Behold, said, behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. So the Lord said he going to call together all the kings of the earth to reverence him. You know what I mean? Read on. Which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. That's World War Three, right there. That's what that's what the Lord is gonna gonna make happen. He's gonna call all the kings and them to fight against each other. Read on. Verse 21. Like at like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. He says, as what? Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. So it says, as they have done even yet this day unto my chosen. You know what I mean? Who is God chosen first and foremost? We go, Israel is his God chosen. But I want a scripture. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Let's show who God, who is God chosen. Because you got Christians running around talking about that they are chosen. I'm chosen. Let's see who God chosen is. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Who is he talking to? The Israelite. The Lord said that we are holy people unto him. Read on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. To be a special people unto himself. The Lord have what? The Lord hath chosen thee. The Lord have what? The Lord hath chosen thee. The Lord have chosen the Israelites. He have chosen the Israelites to be what? To be a special people unto himself. He chosen us to be a special people unto him. Read on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And we ain't equal to nobody on this earth, man. You understand? We are not equal. Even though today in society, we are in the ghetto. We living in the ghetto. You know what I mean? We living in the slums. Things is hard. It's hard to pay the bills. You know what I mean? And you know, the way how other nations is living is different. God says we are better than them. You understand? We are here because of our punishment. So we just got to do... What? Fulfill our punishments and do what God tells us to do. Keep these laws, man. And he's going to turn the tables. You know? So read on. Oh, from there, go back to, to, to Ezra. So the Israelites, we are God chosen people. We are God chosen. Okay? Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen... So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So it says that they have shed innocent blood upon the earth. You understand? They have shed, go to Revelation 18 and 24. Revelation 18 and 24. It says that they have shed innocent blood upon the earth, man. The North American Indians, they came and met them here. They were innocent. What they do? They murdered them and put them on reservations. You understand? That's what they did. They were innocent and they murdered them. 
they signed they they made them sign treaty they then they never kept not one of the treaties that they signed with the North American Indians. Then they say they bought this this they bought Manhattan for a bead. For 22 beads. And some of you are stupid enough to believe that. That's what they teach you in high school. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So read that for me. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And in her, the her here is talking about the harlot. It's talking about Babylon the Great, the abomination of the earth. So it says in her, in Babylon was found the blood of the prophets, man. Read that again one more time for me. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. Read on. That uh that's that's it. Okay, on. that's it. So um jump jump back to jump to second Ezra 15 and 22. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So the Mosai ain't going, he ain't going to give up on them that shed innocent blood upon the earth, man. You know what I mean? And Babylon have shed a lot of innocent blood upon the earth. The Mosai is not going to, he's not going to have mercy upon them. You know, read on. Verse 23. The fire has gone forth from his wrath and that consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. For now, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall and ye shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you, because so, ye have sinned against him. So if we sin against God, he's not going to deliver us when them destruction and them plagues is coming. Okay? Jump to verse 28. Verse 28. Behold, an horrible vision and an appearance thereof from the east. So this is a horrible vision that um that this is a horrible vision that Ezra is having concerning the east. Okay, read on. Where the, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. Okay, Bishop touched on this last week. As I said, I want we to stay on the same chain of thought that the bishop had last week. All right, so it, said, it says that, um, read that one more time again, verse 28. Verse 28, behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. So this is a horrible vision that Ezra is having. A horrible vision. And this vision is concerning where? The east. All right. Read. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. Shall where the what? Where the nations. The of nations. Of the dragons of arabia of the dragons of arabia you understand i little yo this one dude that left up out of here he said that's talking about the red dragon in revelation 12 bugged out, wow. bugged out man you know what i mean yeah some of you brothers y'all became unbelieving and y'all left up out of here now you confuse the letter that you have was taken from you that's what the scripture says right <laughs> That letter you have was taken from you. Now your understanding is gone. You understand? So it says that the, the dragons of Arabia, who is that talking about? Let's go to uh, let's go to Job. Job 30 and 29. That explains dragon. Job 30 and 29. Job 30. Verse 29. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. So, so the most I revert to men as dragons. Okay? Now jump back to Ezra 15. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 20. 
9. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. The dragons of the Arabia is talking about who? The nations over there is talking about the Arabs. The Arabs. Okay? That's who it's talking about. The sons of Ishmael. That's who it's talking about. The dragons of Arabia. Okay? Read that again. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. Shall come out with many chariots. Meaning they're coming out for war. Read on. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. Okay, what is that talking about? Shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. Go to Revelation. Revelation 7 and 1. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. So the word winds, when you read about the winds, it's talking about war. It's talking about, it's talking about military. You understand? That's what it's talking about, the army. You understand? Now go to Second Ezra 13 and 5. When you read Revelation, it said holding back them four, four winds. It's talking about the four army. It's talking about the armies of the, of the earth. You understand? It's it holding them back from coming forth in destruction. There's the book of Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 5. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was, a, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number. From the four winds of the heaven. So this multitude of men is talking about all the armies of the earth that came together to fight against Christ. You know what I mean? So go back to where you was at and read that again in Second Ezra. The book of Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 29. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. It shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. Meaning they came, forth, they came forth for war. You understand? Read on. That all they which hear them may fear and tremble. So all they that hear them shall fear and tremble. This is what's going to take place in the future. Okay? It ain't happened as yet, but it's going to take place. And what Trump did, as the bishop brought out last week, is, is the beginning stages of that taking place. Okay, read on. Verse 30. Also the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as wild boars of the wood. Okay, all right. So Carmanians, can you put up that, that article I sent you? You know, Carmanians, Carmanians. Who is the Carmanians? No, nah, no, nah, I, I think I sent a link. The Carmanians. We want to see who is the Carmanians. So it says the dragons of the wilderness. Remember what I tell you all. We read it, we read it early on in the chapter, in, in, chapter, fifth, in um, chapter 15, verse 1. It says, it says, um, it says, none of these shall fail, man. You understand? It says, none of these shall fail. Meaning, none of these prophecies shall fail, man. Okay, so Carmania. Okay. Fast kingdom. Okay. All right, so read that. Carmania. The ancient province of Carmania lay largely within the modern province of Cayman in central eastern Iran. So when it's talk about the Carmanian, it's talking about who? It's talking about Iran. Okay, that's who the Carmanians is. It's Iran. Okay, so go back and read that again. Right now, it's also the city there is called Kamar. That city is still there in Iran today. You feel what I'm saying? That city is still there in Iran today. But that's the ancient Persians. 
Okay, the ancient Persians is who? Is Elam. That's who they are. Today, they mix with, with Arabs and all type of different, mostly Arabs there in the Middle East and so forth. Even when, they, when Esau conquered them one point in time, he mixed with them too. You understand? But the original, the original Persians is Elam. You understand? That's who they are. They are, the, they are Elam. You know, East Indians. <laughs> That's what they call them today. That's a term they call them today. East Indian. They, they, are, the, they are of the same people. You know? So the Carmanians is Iran. So go back. Go back to where you at. There's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 30. Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. So why does it, why does it says the Carmanians... <laughs> my bad, my bad. So why does it says that the Carmanians gonna be raging in rat? Why does it says that? Because when you look at the news right now, you could see the Iranians is mad. They angry. Why? Because America went over there and and, and killed one of their top generals. You understand? That's why it's saying what it is saying. It said the Iranians is going to be raging and they're going to be mad. Why? Because of the policies, because of the sanctions and the, the economic sanctions and all of that and embargoes that America is putting on that country. You understand? That's why they are angry. That's why they are mad. Read that again one more time. Also, the Carmanians. The Iranians, read on. Raging in wrath. Raging, meaning they, they raging, they angry. Okay, read on. Shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. They're going to go forth. Read on. And with great power shall they come. And, and with great power. You see, you see how Trump was playing stuff off. Trump was like, huh? Um, what he said? He said, um, your missile, nobody got hurt. Irani, Irani, they, 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 um, they fire missiles at one of our base. Nobody got hurt. Everybody is okay. You know what I mean? Yo, the scripture says that they're going to come forth raging in wrath, man. You know, you saw what just took place. You think they stupid enough to come and try to go head-to-head -head war with America? They know they're not going to win. That's why this scripture that we're reading got to be fulfilled. It says that the the um the Arabs, the dragons of Arabia are gonna join together with the Carmanians, Carmanians, which is the Iranis. It says that's gonna take place because if you look in Iraq right now, look at Iraq culture. Most of Iraq culture is the Iranis is over there. They already over there. They selling their goods like they can't sell their goods to America. Because America put embargoes on them and they can sell their goods to Europe and certain countries because of the sanctions. You know, and it's so ironic. You know, a lot of these dumb Negroes keep, they still saying that that's a chip. And we literally seeing the mark of the peace today taking place. We seeing economic sanctions on countries. Where countries can't buy and sell and trade with, with other countries and so forth. You know what I mean? You're seeing it taking place right now, right here. And you're still talking about a chip. You know what I mean? The mark of the beast been around. All nations took drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. All nations took place, took part in the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is, go, is going in to America policies. You understand? America religions and all of that. And all nations take part in that. In some form or fashion, man. Some form or fashion. So read that again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 30. Also the Carmanians raging in wrath. The rat. Iranis raging in wrath. Why? Because they mad at America for all the sanctions that they put in on them. They mad at America because for the murder of one of their princes, they general, read on. Raging in wrath 
shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And with great power. Listen, the Iranians, they not showing their power. They sent some missile. That missile that they sent, they, they wasn't trying to hit nothing. It's all strategy. Y'all, y'all pay attention to what's going on, man. It's all strategy that Iran, Iran know they can't win a full out war with, with the United States of America. They know that. They playing a game. It's strategy. But when they ready, the scripture says they're going to come forth. What? Read that again. Also the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come. It says with great power the Carmanians going to come. With, get, with great power the Iran, Iranians is going to come against Babylon. Against America. Read on. And join battle with them. And join battle with them who? With the Iraqis. With the Afghanistanis. With the, with the Arabs and them in that region. With Saudi Arabia. You understand? With all these descendants of Ishmael over there. Yemen. In, and Yemen. All, all these descendants of Ishmael there in Arabia. All these dragons of Arabia. The Carmanians going to join with them. Okay, read on. And join battle with them. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Read on. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. So it says they're going to have the upper hand. You all stay here and listen to Trump. <laughs> the Bible says that they, the dragons, going to have the upper hand. You understand? They're going to have the upper hand. So you're steady and listening to Trump being all boastful and stuff. That's why prideful. That's why, that's why a lot of the nations and them, they, that's why they still got us on YouTube right now. Because they got to pick our mind. Pick the mind of the prophets. What's really going on? What's going to happen? You know what I mean? Okay, the prophecy said this and that and that. The prophets and them, these guys bringing it out and, yo, that's what they say going to happen. We got to try not to do that. But the most I going to force you all to do something stupid. You know what I mean? He forced Trump to do that stupid thing he just did. You know, go assassinate this prince of another country. You understand? So now all the Arabs and them understand, listen, they did that to him. He could do it to us. You know? And guess what? They did the same thing to, um, to Gaddafi. They did the same thing to Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. You know what I mean? They that's what they do. You know? So from there. From there. Let's um let's let's um move on. Okay. Go to Jeremiah 51 and 17. Jeremiah 51 and 7 and 14. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 14. The Lord of hosts had sworn by himself, saying. So the Mosai swore by himself, swore, sworn by himself, saying, read on. Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. God says, why you think the, the dragon's going to have the upper hand? Why? Because yo, the scripture says that the Lord said he's going to fill Babylon with men like as caterpillars. You understand? That's what you see going on. That's why you see all these. In this country, you got Arabs. You got a bunch of Arabs own these corner stores and so forth. You, do you think they don't feel what their people is going through in these countries? A lot of them came over here and was born here and is recruited and is just waiting for the word. So they could rise up and do what they got to do. So a lot of y'all stay sleeping, man. Remember this one dude was walking to the train station with a bomb on his backpack. And the bomb went off before time. Yeah, I think it was last year that thing happened or sometime. Anybody? It was last year? It was Penn Station. Penn Station. You know what I mean? He just take for one of these crazy fanatics. 
to just go on the train station and and and, and some crazy could happen. A lot of walk by. Yeah. They do all of that. Boom. <laughs> you understand? But it's serious like that, man. It's very serious like that. You know? No. So so um the Lord said he gonna fill fill Babylon with men like as caterpillars. As I said, they're trying to label us terrorists and so forth. The most I say he's gonna laugh at them because the most is gonna cause stuff to happen and he's gonna show them, he's gonna rise up the real terrorists against them. You understand? A lot of these, a lot of these descendants of Ishmael, a lot of them was born here. A lot of them is got citizenship, dual citizenship and so forth. If them is the same ones that gonna that gonna be doing some crazy gonna be putting some crazy plagues in this country, man. You understand? Them is the same ones that gonna be gonna be the terrorists. I'm trying to use the right words, you know what I mean? Cause I know they watching us. You feel me? But yo, go to um Go to Habakkuk 2 and 2. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. So he may run. So we read in another vision, another prophecy. Okay, another prophecy we are about to read about. It says that he shall run that readeth it. Read on. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Meaning, what appointed time this vision was for? The end of days, the time, end of time, which is right now. Read on. But at the end it shall speak. And not lie. Because at the time when the prophets wrote this vision, they didn't understand what, what it was. But today, when we read this vision, we could see clearly what the prophets and them saw and what they were talking about. Okay, read on. Though it tarry, wait for it. Though the vision going to tarry, going to take long, it said wait for it. You know what I mean? Read on. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. This is what you all got to understand. The prophecies that the Most High gave, all of them prophecies come into pass, man. Read on. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. So this is talking about Esau. His soul is not upright in him. Okay? His soul is not upright in him. You know? <laughs> I'm telling you all, you all keep playing around with Esau, man. You know, to me, they look like vampires. You know, with their green eyes and so I don't know. Some men right. You know, the most I said, their soul is not upright in them, man. Read on. Verse 5. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine. He transgressed by wine, meaning different doctrines. Read on. He is a proud man. And he is a proud man. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee, thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rocks. Read on. Neither keep it at home. Neither keep it at home, meaning what? He's in everybody country. That's what, that's what America does. That's what Babylon does. He's in everybody country, destabilizing their country and so forth, and making their the country weak. You understand? That's why when you go back to Isaiah 14, he said, which weakest the, the nations. You know what I mean? Read on. Verse 5. Yea, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep it at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied. But gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. So that's what he did here in America. He gathered all nations and all people under him. You understand? When you read in in um in Daniel, you know the clay mixed with iron. That's America. You know it says they shall be partly strong and partly weak and partly broken or something like that. Reason why it says that? It says that because. Here you you give you give 
Ishmael got rights. You know, Ishmael is living here with rights. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You understand? And it's them same ones going to rise up and, and bite you, man. Them same ones going to gonna be the homegrown terrorists. Yeah, Habib. <laughs> you know, read on. Verse 6, shall not all these take up a parable against him, a taunting proverb against him, and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. That's what the Iraqis and them is saying. That's what um, the, the Persians and them is saying, which is the Carmanians, which is the Iranians. That's what they saying. They say, woe unto you that increaseth in that which is not yours. Read on. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with clay shall they shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and when he the, said laid in itself with thick clay remember what i tell you all that america is that iron and clay you understand so he says he says that laid at himself with thick clay read on shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee that shall they not rise up the thick clay the other nations on them that that is here in babylon you understand? Mainly the dragons of Arabia. It says that what? They shall what? Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? It says that they're going to rise up suddenly and they're going to bite Babylon. They're going to rise up suddenly and bite Babylon. That's why when you read in 2 Ezra 15, it says that they shall have the, the upper hand. Why are they going to have the upper hand? Because they already got, they already got soldiers here embedded in this society. You understand? Read on. And awake that shall vex thee. And awake. Why does it says awake? Because what? Because that's it's, the terminology today is called a sleeper cell. You understand? That's what it's called, a sleeper cell, because they are asleep. A lot of these sleeper cells you got all over all over Brooklyn, all over Manhattan, you know what I mean, in, in, in different states and so forth. You know what I mean? They gonna wake up. They just waking for that call or that text. Or that um what's what's some other communication they communicate with each other? What's that thing I call again? Morris code. They waiting for the Morris code. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what they waiting on. And you not going to stop it. Nobody going to be able to stop it. The most we could do is keep God laws and commandments and pray that he protect us when these things is happening. That's what we got to do. Pray to God to protect us from these things when they happening. And if Abib happened to do some and one of us get caught up one of us end up dying or some, we're going to see that brother or that sister in the kingdom. You understand? Is it? So read on. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? So they're going to rise up and bite them. Read on. And awake that shall vex thee? Why does it say awake? Because they are sleeper cells, man. You know, they are called sleeper cells. They are sleeping right now. Read on. And thou shalt be booties unto them, because thou hast spoiled many nations. So the scripture says, because Babylon, because America have spoiled many nations, have spoiled Afghanistan, have spoiled Iraq, have spoiled Venezuela, has spoiled Iran, because has spoiled Africa. The scripture says, read that again. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? This is what God says. Read on. And awake that shall vex thee. Read on. And thou shalt be for booties unto them. Read on. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Because America, because Babylon has spoiled many nations. Read on. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. All the remnant of the nations that see in America, they going to spoil America, man. You understand? That's it on that? No, there's more. Read on. Because of men's blood. Because of what? Because of men's blood. They just murdered Salamani. You understand? 
Because of what? Because of men's blood. Because of men's blood. Because of man's blood, they went in Iraq and killed Saddam Hussein. They say that he had weapons of mass destruction, which was a lie. <laughs> was a damn lie. You understand? The same way how they're saying, right now they're saying he was a bad guy. You know, he, he needed to die, you know. And same, same thing, same thing, man, because in these countries, they know these things be lie. It's just us here in America be confused and in La La Land, you know, the same way how they turn in, they turn in the media against us and trying to paint us in that bad image as some terrorist hate group and so forth. You know, do you all know, I'm going, I'm going to wait. Till the bishop come up here to bring out this article. You all know, but do you remember that thing that took place with that student? What's his name? The Catholic kids on them. The mega, the mega, what's it called? Mega six, I believe. That yeah. was in DC. You talking about the DC? Yeah, yeah, the DC. Right. Where, they, where they tried to blame the Israelites for the kids on them acting yeah. a fool. Right. Do you know they gave that? Kid, that cook, that kid sue the 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 um Fox News and all, CNN. They sue them for millions, eight hundred million, and and they they settling with them. And what they doing? They blaming us and say was the Hebrew Israelite that caused it. You understand? And they the, these news company got to pay out millions, millions. You understand? But we're going to bring out that article soon. You yeah, understand? Let you all see it. You know? So that's what's going on, man. That's what's going on. So where we at? There's more. There's more. Yeah, keep on reading. Because thou has spoiled many nations. Because they have, Babylon have spoiled many nations. Read on. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Read on. Because of men's blood. And for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Because of, the, because of men's blood and because of the violence of the city. You understand? It says that's why the Mosai is going to bring judgment on Babylon, man. Because of men's blood. You know, they just assassinated. They just assassinated a prince, a general in this, in this, from another country. You know? That's the men's blood. The man's blood is the blood of the prophets. Our blood also. The blood of Geronimo. Because Geronimo was a prophet. You understand? Now, I want you to go to... I want you to go to... to, to turn, turn, turn. Go to Jeremiah 30 and 1. Jeremiah 30 and 1. This is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 30 and verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. So the Lord says he's going to bring again the captivity of who? Of, of his people Israel. Read on. And Judah saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers. And he's going to cause us to return to the land. All right? That have not happened as yet. You understand? You got these, you got these um, Jewish people that's living in that land today. That's not talking about that. You understand? America have put these people in that land and said that they are the real Jews. You know? But what we read in here, it have not taken place as yet. The Lord says he's going to do this. Okay, read on. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice tr of trembling of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? Why every man got his hand on his loins? You hole in your stomach. You under pain? You under pain like a woman? I know men don't have babies. You know, that's what he's saying. You know, read on. 
as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. And all faces is turned into paleness. Read on. Alas, for that day is great, so that so that none is like it. It so, is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So it says that day is great, that there is not even another day like it. It says that day is called what? It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Read it again from the top. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So it says that that day is Jacob's trouble. All right, read on. But he shall be saved out of it. But who shall be saved? But he shall be saved out of it. Who shall be saved out of it? Jacob. Did it say that every nation going to be saved? No. You understand? Like, like you, see, you see a lot of times these Christians running around talking about asking you. Like, you know, sometimes you walk in the street, they're going to come up to you, they're going to say, are you saved, my brother? I be watching. I'm like, man, listen. You know, right now my sword is hosted. You don't want to get into this with me. You understand? Like when I was young, I used to like battling them. I don't know. Like, like I used to love for a Christian to ask me a question. Like when I see Jehovah Witness, like, oh, speak, they coming off. Oh, run to the door. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just playing and you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And you playing it cool. They, I like, yo, they don't know what they're getting into, you know what I mean? And you just chopping them up but and cutting them up. But, you know, when I was young, I liked doing that. You know, you have fun. You could sharpen your sword, you know. So yeah. The battles on the train, the yeah. battles on the buses. and Yeah, yeah we on the they train. talking to you. They thinking that you don't know the scriptures. Right. You're just sitting there quiet yeah. until the precepts start coming out. Yep. And then that's when like, they start running. They start running. Why are you running? Yeah. Why are you running, man? You know? So, yo, I used to like battling. Hey, back in the day, me and Yon used to set them up nice. Like, Yon used to read my mind. He was like 16. I don't know. I probably was like 20-something. You know? So, we used to set them up nice, man. Like, I used to be like, yo, so, um, you know, so, you know, we used to set them up nice. We used to be like, yo, so, um, we used to be like, we used to be like so do you know God? They were like, oh, I know God. Yeah, if, man. I know the Lord. Yo, we'll like, yo. <laughs> and then our, once you say that, yeah. I'm already at first yeah, John already too. Know, Right. Y'all already know where to go for me. You understand? <laughs> so we used, to, we used to set them up nice and stuff, man. Yeah. Officer Leon would be reading for Deacon Yawasab at yeah. Queens Camp. The Christians would be coming up, and he's already got the scripture. You know? You know? That, that hey, that's you armor bearers got to learn to be in the spirit, man. One mind with the teacher. You know what I mean? You armor bearers, you got to be in one mind with the teacher, man. A lot of you brothers, I don't know if you all still do that. You know, it's like one mind, one spirit. You know where I'm going, you know? Because sometimes, Deacon, y'all armor bearers, sometimes the teacher says, you know what I want. So you got to know where he wants to go at that time. Because yeah. the last thing you want to hear, when, when you're in battle mode, one time we were, we were teaching, and you say, you know what I want. And you be like, yo, read. <laughs> And you, bro, bro, give me another reader. Because the Christians, they think now they got one on us. Right. Okay. Because we flipping through pages. So you as the reader, as you're reading for the deacon or the captain or the officer, as you're going through the scriptures, you got to hear certain key words. Right. And you got to already go there. And when the Christians see that, they, they back up. Like, how the hell did he know? I used the same word. How did he know that? So it's hey. a battle to win our people's minds over. It's war, man. But hey, they studying how we warring and trying to counteract us. But yo, we got we got artillery that we doesn't even use. You know what I mean? We waiting for the big guns to use them artillery, to use them artillery on. I wanna say artillery. I mean the scriptures. You know what I mean? Okay. Talking about the Bible. Okay, the we Bible. talking about the Bible. <laughs> like these guys talking violent stuff. Artillery. What do they got? They got bazookas or something? Anyway. The Bible and the Bible Dictionary and, yep. the, and the Apocrypha and Artillery. the Bible Atlas. That's it. <laughs> Art, yeah. You know, this war is spiritual for us. But anyways, let's go back to where we was at. So where we was at? Uh, J Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse right. 7. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So it says... That day is terrible and it, it ain't going to be no other day like it. And it says that day is called Jacob trouble. Okay, read on. 
but he shall be saved out of it. But the Lord is going to save Jacob. He's going to save us up out of that day. What day? Jacob trouble. As I keep on going on in the lessons, you're going to see what Jacob trouble is. Okay? So um, go to Daniel. Go to Daniel 12 and 1. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. So the, the scripture says at that time, Michael going to stand up. Michael the archangel. The same Michael you read in Revelations. You understand? Read, read that again one more time again. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. For who? For the children of thy people. No, all nations. For the children of thy people. So that's who the, the archangel going to stand up for, the children of Daniel people, which is who? Which is the Israelites. Read on. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. So that is the same thing we just read in Jeremiah. It says that there's going to be a time of trouble that there was never since, even to that same time. What is that time of trouble that we keep reading about? We just read about it. It says that it's called what? It's called Jacob trouble. Okay. So that time of trouble, what is that time of trouble that we keep reading about? Read on. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. And at that time, Daniel people shall be what? Shall be delivered. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Delivered, saved, same thing. You understand? Now, let me tell you, brother, some. Some of you brothers and sisters, I know you all got still fighting Christianity. Christianity, but check it. To be saved is, is usually two things. You save from your enemy, or, or um you save, you're gonna be safe from destruction or world war three. You understand? When the Bible talks about being saved, it's either those two things. You're being saved from your enemies, from living in the land of your enemies and being put back in your own land or you being saved from nuclear destruction, from that destruction that is to come. So when these Christians running around talking about, I'm saved, saving the blood of Jesus, what are they talking about? Are you really saved? Are they, are they really saved? No, they are not. You understand? So let me show you all some. Let's stay in that same Jeremiah and read that. Read verse 1 again. Jeremiah 30. Um, for loaf and 3. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 3. This is telling you what it means to be saved. Read. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people I Israel. will bring again the slavery of my people Israel. You understand? And bring this captivity that we are being brought back from is not talking about us going, coming because we was released from the Persians and the Medes and we was allowed to go back and rebuild Jerusalem. That's not what captivity this is talking about. Read on. Saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers. Read on. And they shall possess it. So that's what it's talking about being saved. Us being returned from the land of our captivity and possessing the land of our fathers. So if you ain't, if you ain't doing that, guess, if you ain't in that, if, if the Lord, guess what? You're not saved. You understand? We're still in the land of our captivity. Read on. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Now jump to verse, what you was that? Seven, Jacob's trouble. Yeah, jump to verse seven. Verse seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. 
It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So in that great day, that great day, it says that day is Jacob's trouble. Okay, read on. But he shall be saved out of it. But who shall be saved? But Jacob shall be saved out of it, out of that day. You understand? Let me get that. Is it is it in Psalms 91? I think it's Psalms 91. Yeah, let me get that. Yeah. Let me show you all some. When it says he shall be saved out of it. You want uh, verse uh, 3? Hold on. You know what I want? I want to start too early down. All right, verse 4. Start at verse 4. The book of Psalm, chapter 93. Okay, start at verse 3. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. The fowler is the trapper. The fowler is somebody that, you know, I don't know if you ever tried to catch birds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I used to catch chicken back in the islands. I used to get my little string, put some feed inside there and go around the corner and just throw some rice on the floor and the chicken and them used to be walking, you know? He go inside the trap. I just pull the string and I catch it. You know? So that's a fowler. It's a trap that you set up to catch fowls. You know, to catch birds. Okay, read on. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Read on. And from the noisome pestilence. And from the noisome pestilence. Read on. He shall cover thee with his feathers. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Read on. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Read on. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. What is the terror by night? Read on. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor by the arrow that flieth by day. Is this talking about the regular born arrow? No, it's not. Read on. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Read on. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. The destruction that wastes at noonday. What is this talking about? It's talking about nuclear destruction. You understand? If you ever look at like a, a missile, you know what I mean? It looked like an arrow. You know, you got a little thing behind it and so forth. So this is what the prophet's seen. And he says... The the arrow, or or the what? Read that. Read that again. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Read on. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. The destruction that wastes at noonday. That wastes at noonday. Read on. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Does an arrow have the power to make a thousand people fall on one side? No. This is talking about nuclear weapons. You understand? Read on. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Read on. And ten thousand by at thy right at thy and right hand. Does a arrow get the, the power to kill ten thousand people at one time? No. This is talking about nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. That's what this is talking about. Read on. But it shall not come nigh thee. So that's what it means with that's being saved. You got to. A thousand people die on one side of you and 10,000 people die on the other side of you and the most side is going to protect you. You understand? He's going to deliver you when that destruction is taking place. You know, he says he's going to tell his, the, the angels, gather ye my sins together unto me. You know, that's why it's not going to come near you. You know what I mean? There's, you know, that's why it's not going to come near you because the angels and them going to be delivering you when that thing is taking place. When that destruction is taking place. You understand? So, from there, jump back to where you was at. Jeremiah 30. And, and read um, verse 7 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. But he shall be saved out of it we shall be saved out of it meaning jacob trouble meaning that world war three that destruction you know let me get that in revelation to show you it's revelation hold on 
Go to Revelation 11 and 14. Revelation 11 and 14. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 14. The second woe is passed. So the second woe is passed. Everybody understand that World War II is gone, right? It's in the his it's it's in the history books now. The prophets and them wrote about this two thousand years ago. It was prophecy, but it came to pass. As you saw, the bishop brought out the class last week, showing you what took place. It came to pass, so now it become history. The prophecy became history. You understand? So now we could say, okay, read that again. The second woe is past. Now we could say the second woe is past. Read on. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe, the, the third woe is talking about World War Three. You understand? It says the third woe, woe cometh quickly. And also the third woe or World War Three. It's also called Jacob Trouble. You understand? When you read Daniel's 12 and 1, we just read that there shall be a trouble that have never been from the beginning. And, in, and it says that there, that you're going to be, that the Jake, that you're going to be delivered, man. That Daniel, thy people going to be delivered in that time of that trouble that never been ever since on the earth. What time of trouble that is? World War Three. All right? Or Jacob trouble. So from there, read that again one more time. Verse 15. I'm sorry, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So it said the second woe is past, and the third woe cometh quickly. Okay, so from there, jump back to where you was at. Jump back to I was at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 and read verse 7 again. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. But he shall be saved out of it. All right, so Jacob shall be saved out of it, out of that day. How? We just read it in Psalms 91. It says, it says, a thousand shall fall on one side, ten thousand shall fall on another side, but it shall not come near thee. You understand why? Because Christ is going to command the angels to gather ye my saints unto me. Those that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You brothers and sisters that sacrifice your life for, for the most high. Is it? So from there. Keep on reading. Verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. So the Lord says he's going to break his yoke from off thy neck. Whose yoke he's going to break? The yoke of Egypt, the yoke of Babylon. Mm -hmm. That yoke that we got upon our neck today, we still got that yoke on our neck. And we don't physically have it around on our neck, but we are destroyed as a people. That yoke is still on us. You know, read on. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. And strangers shall what? And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. The strangers say is talking about the other nations. The other nations shall serve no more themselves with us. You all understand that? When it says, meaning we, we are servants in this captivity. You understand? You brothers and sisters, them little jobs you got doing, they are servants' jobs. Understand that. You are servants in this captivity, man. Always get that in your mind. Don't matter. You might be making, uh, um, you might be making. Okay, I'm making a hundred stacks a year, or ninety stacks a year. Listen, you still a servant, man. You still a servant, and you still serving these nations, man. Read that one more time again. For it shall come to pass 
in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, of Jacob. You know what I mean? The, the Lord said, meaning you ain't got to serve nobody no more, man. And no begging for the Sabbath off no more. You know? Read on. Verse 9. But they shall serve the Lord thy God. But we're going to serve the Lord thy God. Read on. And David their king. This is how you know it's talking about Christ, man. Because David been done dead here in the time of Jeremiah. But he's saying, and David your king. Why? Because Christ said, I'm the root and the offspring of David, man. It's talking about Christ. And David their king shall what? And David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Okay, read on. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. So the Lord said, don't be afraid. Jacob, Jacob is talking about Israel. It's talking about you, brothers and sisters. Read on. Therefore, fear not, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Read on. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. For the most high God says he's going to save us from afar. You all understand what it means to be saved. Okay, don't let nobody confuse you. Put the scripture down. To be saved is to be delivered from the land of your enemy. That's what it means to be safe. To be safe is also talking about you being safe from that destruction that is to come. You understand that Jacob trouble, World War Three. You know what we just read in Daniel's twelve and one. Okay, read on. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and f- and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. That's what the scripture says. Okay? These lands is the lands of our captivity that we was made to be servants. And we've been serving the nations here in the land of our captivity. The Lord said he's going to save us. Those of us that's living in these lands of our captivity. Okay? Read on. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. And nobody should make us go make us afraid, man. You understand? You see how we are afraid today? Some of you brothers are afraid to put the menorah on. You know? You you are ashamed to say that you are an Israelite because society is labeling you a terrorist. So you are ashamed. You are ashamed to wear the black Christ sh- t shirt. He said, man, I ain't wearing that in Jersey, man. (laughs) You were ashamed. The scripture says you ain't going to be ashamed no more. Some of you all are ashamed to wear your fringes. Oh, that's one of them Israelites right there. Yep, they terrorists. Be careful. You know? The scripture says you ain't going to be ashamed no more, man. Read on. Read on that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's it on that. All right, so read verse 7 again one more time. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. For it even the time of Jacob's trouble, read on. But he shall be saved out of it. But Jacob shall be saved out of it, okay? From there go to Job 5 and 19. So Jacob's trouble, as I said, is World War III, okay? Have World War III started as yet? No, it haven't started as yet. It has, but the beginning stages have had. The Mosai is preparing the battlefield. He's putting certain things in order to get it popping. You know, that's what's going on. You understand? There's the book of Job, chapter 5 and verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So it says that he shall deliver thee in six trouble. In the six trouble. Six trouble. And in the seventh shall, shall what? Shall no evil touch thee. And in the seventh shall no evil touch thee. You know? 
All right. So from there, I want you to go to um, I'm going back to where the bishop was at last week. Go to Revelation, Revelation nine. Revelation nine. So it says that he shall deliver thee in the what? No, it says that he shall deliver thee in the what? In the sixth. And in the seventh shall nothing come near thee. Right? That's what we just read. So go to Revelation. Go to Revelation 9. Start at verse. Yeah, start at 1, man. There's the book of Revelation, chapter 9 and verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So Bishop went over this last week. Okay. So we know it says that the fifth, the fifth trumpet sung did, right? And it says when the fifth trumpet was sung did, it says that there was an angel that was given the keys to the, to the bottomless pit. We went over that. Bishop went over that and showed you who that is, and so forth. You understand all of that we, we touched on last week. Read on. So this is the fifth trumpet we're talking about, correct? Okay, read on. Verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. So Bishop went over that last week too. He says, that's talking about the airplanes that they was using at that time. Okay? Remember, this is the fifth trumpet. Okay? And what we're reading about here is what? World War I. All right? Read on. That's what we're reading about. World War I was the fifth trumpet. And we're reading about World War One. Read on. Verse 4. And it was commanded them they that, that should not that should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So you had Edomites killing each other. That's what that was about. Read on. Verse 5. And to them it was given given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and desire to die, and death shall flee from them. All right, so jump to verse, jump to verse 13. Verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So it says, loose the four angels that is bound in the great river Euphrates. Remember, this is the sixth trumpet. You all remember what we read in Job? It says in the what? No, no, no. What we just read in Job. Six troubles in the seven. No, you are not paying attention. Go back to Job and read Job again. To refresh your mind, then I'm going to jump back here. All right, you all be quiet. I'm going to read it. You're guessing. Read it again. The book of Job, chapter 5 and verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Okay. So he says he shall deliver you in six trouble. What is the six trouble he's talking about? Okay. And he says in, in the seven, nothing shall trouble you. So the six trouble that he shall deliver you from is Jacob trouble, which is also what? World War Three. That's the sixth trouble. What we what what is also called? It's called go go read that again. Thirteen. And the what? Revelation nine verse thirteen. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice 
The from sixth angel tr- sounded, meaning the trumpet was blown. The sixth angel, that's the sixth trouble, all right? The fifth trouble was what? The fifth, when the, when the fifth trumpet was blown, that was World War I, right? And World War II began. You feel what I'm saying? Read on. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the, in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So these four angels is prepared. The bishop went over it last week. It's prepared for to slay the third part of men. These four angels and them is, talk, is talking about this right here is talking about World War Three. You understand? So what trumpet we are in right now? We are still in the fifth. We are still in the ending part of the fifth. You know, we have not meet, meet the sixth trumpet as yet. When the sixth trumpet is blown, it's war. World War Three. But what is holding back the sixth trump? Go to Revelation 7. To show you all what the sixth trump is, I mean, what's the sixth trump is? Go to Revelation 7. Verse 3. And 3. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 3. Hold on. It's 3 I want. Hold on. Let me just make sure. Yes. And I know I'm playing that with Ezekiel. You did me dirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wasn't my good armor bearer. You know what I mean? Oh, that was years ago, Deacon. Yeah. Okay. That. Start at verse 1. Good thing I look at it. Start at verse 1. <laughs> The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So them four angels is the four angels that we just read about early on. You understand? When that, when that, um, when the sixth trump was sung, the same four angels we're reading about is the same. In the Euphrates, is the same four angels we're reading about here. Okay? Read that again. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. What is the four winds that they holding back? They holding back the armies of the earth. You understand? That's what the four winds of the earth is. Go, you know what? To prove that, go to Ezra's. Go to Ezra's. Go to Ezra's 13. No, Ezra 7. No, no, no. Ezra's, what I want, 13, 2nd Ezra 13 and 5. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So the four winds of heaven is talking about the multitude of men, the armies that came to subdue Christ. You understand? That's what the four winds is going into. You know, so go back to Revelation and read that again. Revelation 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. Holding back the four winds of the earth is talking about holding back the armies, holding back World War Three, Holding back World War Three. Read on. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. So the armies, for the armies not to destroy nothing. You understand? So now jump back. Jump back to where you was at in Revelation. Revelation 9 and 13. Read that again. This is the book of Revelation chapter 9 and verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the, in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. 
So that's what they was prepared for. You understand? These angels was prepared for war. All right? Read on. It's prepared for... It, these angels were holding back. These angels is because all the elect haven't been sealers yet. Read on. And the number of the army of the horsemen were all two. Right? So from there... So everybody understand that. So go back to Job again and read that again. This is the book of Job, chapter 5 and verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. So the six trouble, it's talking about World War Three. It's talking about the six trumpet. When that six trumpet is sung. Everybody understand? Okay, read on. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. And it says that in seven... When the in seven shall no evil touch thee. What does that mean? Go to Revelation. Go to Revelation. Revelation 11. Revelation 10 and 7. And this, then Revelation 11 and 15. This is the book of Revelation chapter 10 and verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he had declared to his servants the prophets. Read that again one more time. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. So the voice of the seventh angel, meaning that seventh trumpet. When that seventh trumpet is blown, it says, it says, we just read in Job that nothing should trouble you, right? So it's so read that one more time again, Ezekiel. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound. The mystery of God should be finished. The mystery of God is going to be finished. You understand? Everything that this Bible talk about, all these prophecies, all of that going to be fulfilled. The mystery of God should be, will be finished. You understand? Meaning we're going to be in the kingdom. Okay, read on. As he had declared to his servants, the prophets. Okay. From there, let me get the other scripture. Revelation 11 and verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded. And, and the seventh angel sounded the trumpet. Read on. Remember, we read in Job, it says, In the sixth, he shall deliver thee. In the sixth what? The sixth trumpet. What is the sixth trumpet? The sixth trumpet is World War Three. You understand? We read Jacob trouble. They're going to be time that I've never been from the beginning till that same time. You understand? And he says that that time you're going to be saved. In Daniel, he says, they're saying the same thing. There's going to be a time that I've never, a destruction, a kind of trouble is coming. And Michael going to stand up for the children of thy people. And in that time, you shall be delivered. You know what I mean? It's saying the same thing right through the scriptures. What time is this? It's the third world war. It's the sixth trumpet. Okay? So read that scripture for me. Revelation 11 and verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. So this is what it mean by in the seventh, nothing shall trouble us. Why? Because, read that again. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Because the kingdoms of this world, all the rulership on this earth, it becomes the kingdom of the Lord. Meaning Christ and the Israelites is ruling the earth now. Read on. And of his That's Christ. the seventh. That's the seventh trumpet. Read on. And of his Christ. And of his Christ, read on. And he shall reign forever and ever. And he shall what? And he shall reign forever and ever. So that is the seventh trumpet. You understand? So go back to Job and read that again. The book of Job 5 and 19. <sighs> but he shall deliver thee in six troubles. For he shall deliver thee in six trouble. The six trouble, as I said, is World War Three. Okay, the sixth tr trouble is Jacob trouble. The sixth trouble is the sixth trumpet. 
when that sixth trumpet blown and the angel and them is loose, that holding the armies back from, from war, that's what that's going into. World War Three. Okay? Read on. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Why? Because the kingdom going to be the Lord's in the seventh. You understand? Okay? So from there, so from there, I want you to go to, let me see. From there, go back to Revelation 7. Go back to Revelation 7. Go back to Revelation 7. And start at verse 1 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Read hold, on. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Having the seal of the living God. What is the seal of the living God? The laws and the testimonies. Isaiah 8 and 16. Okay. So read on. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Read on. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So it says, hurt not the earth, nor the sea, or, or the trees and so forth, till we have sealed the servants of God in their forehead. Right? Keep on reading. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So you all understand who was sealed. It's a hundred and forty-four thousand from each tribe that's going to be sealed. Correct? And what's holding back the destruction? The, why is the angels holding back the destruction? Because it says they not seal us right? as yet right okay they ain't seal as yet so the 144 leaders have to be sealed right now i'm going to hit you with a nugget and i'm going to wait for the bishop to bring it out i will just say that <laughs> i'm going to hit you with a with a nugget you understand because a lot of times a lot of times we say that um we say that we wait in today for 144 to be sealed from each tribe, right? But let me show you all something. And I'm going to close it off here. All right, let me see. What am I looking for? I was reading it the other day now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Officer Liam, say something. Hey, say something, man. Let me find it. Yeah. Read that again in Revelation 7 and Re verse, verse 5. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. You see that? That's all we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. Well, this is, I'm just joking. But was letting us know that the tribes were digging and saying, you have, that was heavy what he, what he just said. I don't know if people caught it. But like the deacon saying, some of us are saying, because one brother said that to me, I don't see 12,000 Reubenites or 12,000 Gadites or uh, 12,000 people from Brazil. I mean, Asher and so forth. So, you know, Lord's will, we, 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 we could be a part of waking those brothers up. You understand? So all praise to the most high. So, you know, Judah is going to wake the people up. Like in Deuteronomy 33 said, Benjamin and Levi are going to tag along, and we're going to be a unit. We're going to be a unit. And then Northern Kingdom, because what, what you notice right now in IUIC, you're going to see mostly Judah and Benjamin and Levi. I yeah, noticed that, right? Then you're going, to get a, you're going to get sprinkles of Northern Kingdom coming in too. You know, so you're going to see some Ephraim here. You're going to see, I don't really see Manasseh like that, you know. But they're going to come, they're going to come too. 
And some of them tribes that when we go to Africa and teach, some of them could be Manessa and Ephraim and um, those, those Northern Kingdom tribes could be over there as well. So sometimes we, we, we focusing on trying to wake up people from Nicaragua, <laughs> Zebulon, some of them in Africa could be those tribes that we don't really know. Like when you read Babylon and Timbuktu, Hannibal was what tribe? They said he was is, uh, Asher or, um, or Zebulon. They, them, them, those tribes, some of them tribes are still in Africa. You know, but the bulk of the tribes are here. You understand? So, uh, Cap, I know you got uh, Benjamin Wisdom, you know? <laughs> hey, let's go to um, Second Peter's chapter 1 and verse 10. Second Peter's chapter 1 and verse, let's start at verse, verse 4. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and what? And precious promises. The precious promises is that we will be delivered. The world is at its knees right now. Everybody's afraid of what's happening. But the Bible is promising us that we are going to be delivered. Keep reading. By That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. The walk that we're in, God calls it the divine nature. We're special. Keep reading. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The corruption that's in the world is the partying, the smoking weed, the selling drugs. All of that is corruption. The Bible says we've escaped. Come on. And beside this, giving all diligence. By you giving diligence, you're coming to the school. When we have the school open on New Year's Day, so-called New Year's Day, so-called Christmas Day. Because it's to escape. It's to escape. Giving diligence is showing up to the fundraisers. Because it's not, some people may look at it as, oh, it's just selling water. No, 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 no. It's more than selling water. People have never seen sisters with head wraps selling water. They never seen Brothers United selling water. The goal is to raise money to help our people. That's the goal. There's a goal. Keep reading. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Come on. And to virtue, knowledge. Come on. And to knowledge, temperance. These are things that, guess what? For some of us, it will take years to accomplish. Why? Because we may make mistakes. But we're going to stay faithful. Read on. And to temperance, patience. Uh -huh. And to patience, godliness. Uh -huh. And to godliness, brother kindness. Uh -huh. Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Now look at verse 8. For if these things be in you. The knowledge, the temperance, the patience, the godliness, the brotherly kindness. If these things be in us, the Bible says. And abound. Uh -huh. And grow. The thing is, we're supposed to grow in these qualities. Watch what it says now. They make, th they make you that ye shall neither be barren uh -huh. nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly. All right. Go ahead, Deacon. All right. So, yes, I found, I found, it, I found it back, okay? <laughs> so... Um, go first, go to Second Ezra 2 and 40. Remember the chain of thought, the reason why I went here. Revelation 7, it says um, that <clears throat> it says the, the winds, the destructions, World War III, what's holding that back from taking place is that the servants of God have to be sealed in their forehead. You know what I mean? Meaning their mind. Okay? So what I was telling you all, a lot of time we think one way, but the way how the most I think is different from us. You understand? We thinking that, okay, Israel just wake up. Israel is waking up and we waiting for 144 leaders today. And 144,000 from each tribe today in this society to be sealed. But I'm going to show you all some. Go to 2 Ezra 2 and 40. There's the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2 and verse 40. Take thy number, O Zion. Take, th take thy number, O Zion. Read on. And shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. And shut up those 
of thine that are clothed with white. Read on. Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Which have what? Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. So remember, what is the seal? So what is it saying here concerning summer Zion? They have fulfilled the laws of the Lord. It says, shut them up and clothe them in white. You understand why? Because they have fulfilled the laws of the Lord. And it's, and it's not just any saints. It's talking about the number. Okay, read it again one more time. Take thy number, O Zion. And it's talking about the number, the 144,000. Read on. And shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning. Well, you got to understand, them, them 144,000 leaders, they were created to, to be that exactly by the Mosai leaders. They were called from the beginning. All right, read on. The number of the the number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. So the time is gonna come when that number gonna be fulfilled. You understand? It's not fulfilled as yet, but the time is gonna come when that number is gonna be fulfilled. Okay. So go to Ezra four and thirty five. Let me show you also. The number that they long it after. The, lo the number that Zion is long it after is 144,000. That's the number. 12,000 from each tribe. That's the number that Zion is long it after. You know what I mean? Once them leaders is sealed, that's all it's waiting on. That's all the Mosai is waiting on. Once them leaders is sealed, destruction is coming. It didn't, talk, it didn't say all oh, Israel going to be sealed. No, it's the leaders. It's certain special men that are going to come on this earth and wake up the tribes of Israel. It's certain special spirit that was chosen from the beginning. Read on. Second Ezra chapter 4 and verse 34. And he answered me saying, do not thou hasten above, excuse me. And he, and he said, and he answered me saying, do not thou hasten above the most highest for thy haste is in vain to be above him. So this Ezra was trying to hasten the Mosai for the end to come. You know what I mean? For the number to be fulfilled. You know, because he's like, I want to get out of this captivity, man. Read on. For thou hast much exceeded. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? So you got souls... At this time, in Ezra's time, that was already sealed. And they asked him, how long we got to wait? You understand what I'm saying? For our reward and so forth. Read on. When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? And unto these things did, and unto these things Uriel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, even when the number of seeds is filled in you. Even when? Even when the number of seeds is filled in you. The number of their seed, meaning that 144,000. Meaning at that time, there was already a number that was already sealed. But until the rest been sealed, you're going to got to stay there. And you, gonna, you still got to stay there. The same thing it says in Revelation. As I said, I'm going to wait for the bishop to do a class on this. Or I'm going to probably bring it out. But, you know, <laughs> read on. And unto these things, Uriel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. So the Lord weighed the world in a balance. All right, read on. By measure hath he measured the times. And the most I measure all the times. You know, all the times he have measured it. Read on. And by number hath he measured the times. And by number have he measured the time. I mean, in each time, the saints and them going to be sealed, man. You know, so, so, so today we waiting, we waiting to, um, thinking that 144 is going to be sealed today. But over history, over time, they have been being sealed. 
And I, and I got this, I, I got, you know, it's there. The scriptures is there that explain all of that. But that's another class for itself. I'll tell you all. I'll wait for the bishop to bring it out, you know. So go back to Revelation 7 again and read that one more time again. So let me, so we are not waiting for 144 leaders to raise up in this time. We might be waiting for 10. You never know. We might be waiting for only 10. Might be waiting for 20 or 100. Or might be 1,000. I don't know. You understand? But I know we are not waiting for 144. You know what I mean? Over time, these men, these men been being sealed. You know? You go ahead. Right, just real quick. Because if you saying, oh, Judah... I got to wait. Like, you could say, okay, I got to see Ephraim 10,000, Manessa got to come, and then some people use that as a way to still BS. Because, okay, I know possibly this Judah is sealed, but Benjamin ain't here, Levi is here, so I got time to still do my BS and my evil. But Deacon bringing bring out that some people are weak, some brothers are sealed already, so you can't think like that. That was it. Yeah, a lot of brothers been sealed over the thousands of years that have been going by. Let's understand that, you know. So um, read that again for me. Revelation this, 7. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 3. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So that's who's going to be sealed. That's talking about the leaders. The leaders, okay, going to be sealed from each tribe of the children of Israel. So, as I said, you all see what's holding back. You all see why. What's holding back Jacob trouble or what's holding back World War III is because them leaders have not been sealed as yet. And it's a special way they're going to be sealed. But I'm going to wait on that too. You understand? It's a, these, as I say, some things I want to bring up, but I want to wait on the bishop. You know? So, um, anybody got questions? Hey, shalom, Deacon. Hey, uh, shalom. Good class. Hey, um, Hosea 6 and 1 and 2, where's that in um, Job 5 and 19? Like, is that, um, because it talks about the three, the three days? Yeah, get it and read it. Get it and read it. Okay, get that and read it. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 6 and verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he had torn and he will heal us. He had smitten and will bind us up. After two days he will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So what you said? That's talking about what? Uh, it's the second day, the um, the sixth day in Job. Read that again. You getting deep on me? Hold on. <laughs> Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 Come and let us return unto the Lord for Let he, us return unto the Lord Read on For he hath torn and he will heal us He hath smitten and will bind us up After two days will he revive us In the third day he will raise us up And we shall live in his sight In the third day he shall rise us up and we shall live in his sight. The third day going to be the seventh trump. You know what I mean? You could say that. You could put that with the seventh trump. You know? So you could, that, that could line up with the seventh trump. You know? But what's missing there is the trouble that he's going to deliver us from. Right. Which is the sixth trump. You know? But, but yeah, you could use that as the seventh trump. Um, and one more. Um, in 
the last precept in uh, Ezra, isn't it a um, isn't it a verse in Revelation that says the same thing? Where it says, um, yes, the, there is, but as I said, that's a class for itself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? That's a class for itself. You know, the, the 144,000, that's a class for itself. The bishop, they touched on some heavy, was I think it was two weeks ago. He said some heavy, some he read. So I'm, so I'm going to wait on him to bring it out. <laughs> you know, yeah. Shalom, Deacon. Um, second Ezra is 15 and 30. It says, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Right. That's the land there in the Middle East. So they, what's they, that saying? They, 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 yeah, they going, when they come together, they're going to waste a land, a, a portion of the land over there. You know what I mean? Casualties over there. You see? And it's also going into the history also in the past too. Remember, the scripture is twofold. You know, it's also going into the history in the past also because the Carmanians, that was a city over there at that time, and they became the Persians. And remember, they came and they conquered Babylon. You understand? So the scripture is twofold. All right. So with that, hopefully. Lord's will, everybody got an understanding from the class that I brought out. You know what I mean? Let's give a round of applause for that deep class. <laughs> now, now concerning, hey, we got, hey, we, listen, um, last week, you know, we had make, there was an announcement that brother had got shot. Right. You know, he, was, he had got shot, a brother in Canada. You know, um, I just want everybody to know you know, the most I answer the prayers, and the brother is okay. You understand? Yeah. Also, um, we got the brothers and the sisters out there on the quest. I think today they are in Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. Today they are in Puerto Rico, so we got brothers and sisters out there. As you all know that the... Early on in the week, there was an earthquake over there. So brothers is over there right now. They are teaching the word. They are reaching out to the people. So, you know, you brothers, keep brothers and sisters out there in, in, in your prayers. And pray that the Mosai do his work there in, 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 in uh, Puerto Rico. You understand? For real. So what else, what else we got we to gotta bring up? About it. That's about it. Make sure y'all register for Passover for North Carolina, or if you know for budgeting reasons you got to fall back. Understand? Make sure you register for New York Passover on the website. Uh, pull it up real quick, Enoch. So if yeah. you can't make it to North Carolina, the main Passover, just make sure you register for the Passover up here. Okay. I think it's uh, ticketpremier.org. Just to show y'all, ticketpremier.org. Um, how many of y'all going down to North Carolina? Raise your hand, brothers and sisters. Okay, all praises, all praises, all praises. All pra how many of y'all your first pass over this year? Raise your hand. Okay, all praises. All right, all right. All right well, we're going to have a good yeah. time. All right, we're going to have a good time. Um, yes, yeah, so when you go on the website, wait, you go to the website, uh, Enoch. Yeah, go on the website. It's not Ticket Premier? What is Okay, royaleventplanning.net, and then you're going to hit NY Tri-State Passover 2020 if you're staying here to keep the local Passover, all right? If you can't make it to the real Pass the Passover, make sure you register for the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. No, nah, no, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm All right, sorry. those of y'all stay back. That gonna be the fake Passover. Yeah, yeah. Nah, you, you still keeping the Passover. No, yeah. for real, for real. Yeah, you, you still gonna... keeping the law. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's all but, good. Uh, we ain't gonna get on you. <laughs> but no, no. Try your best to make it to North Carolina, but it's understandable. It's understandable. Sometimes you gotta fall back. Sometimes you gotta fall back. Right. So um, let's just keep it in the spirit of the most high. You're gonna have a good time. And uh, any other any other announcements? Yeah, yo, y'all stay in the spirit, man, and stay in the truth. Don't fall off. Y'all see what's going on, man. 
things is getting real out here. You brothers and sisters, hold the line. You understand? All these brothers and sisters that fall off, fall off during, um, for this past year, man. You know what I mean? Now they got egg on their face. They looking stupid. Brothers and sisters that became faithless. What's that word we read early on? The, huh? Incredulity. Incredulity. Yeah, them incredulity, incredulity. brothers and sisters. <laughs> you know what I mean? You all fall off. You all couldn't hold the line. You all allow heresies come. Now you worship in the, you, you don't even know when the Sabbath begin. A lot of you all ain't even keeping the Sabbath. You all living and doing what the hell you all want to do. You all cause somebody to take you out of the truth. Deacon, they you understand? Chicken on Passover. Yeah, the, you allow somebody to take you out of the truth. You know, now you looking stupid. Listen, man, I ain't got no time to be arguing with or going back and forth with no bitter, evil, vengeful brothers and sisters, man. Traitors. You understand? False brethren. I ain't got no time for it. You feel what I'm saying? The world is coming to an end. And we seeing the prophecies being fulfilled. And here is you being evil and causing confusion. I ain't got no time for it, man. You understand? Soon, soon the way how I rolling from now on is that you come, you come with some foolishness. I just tell you, man, just stay home and watch online. That's it. You know what I mean? I ain't got no time to be going back and forth with no foolishness. Right now, the world is coming to an end. You understand? And that's the frame of mind. All you warriors, that's the mind you all have to have, man. No time for no woman bullshit. Oh, sorry. Damn, my bad. My bad. Sorry. Ah, man. I came out. It of means it. Women, issues. No yeah, women, yeah. Issues. Woman issues. Woman right, issues. Woman issues. My bad. Mm. I ain't got no time for no woman issues, man. No dumb woman bickering issues. You understand? You know? So you brothers get your mind right, man. You know, I want to hear, oh, this, some of you brothers, you all hold on to stuff. Oh, this brother did this to me three years ago. Listen, Christ is coming. Christ, Christ is, is coming. coming. Christ, Christ is, is coming. coming. What the hell are you worrying about? Four years ago, this brother did something to you. You better, you better come on, man. You all better get your mind right and understand what time we're living in. As I said, I ain't got no time for no foolishness. I see foolishness. I'm telling you, I'm just telling you all, stay online. Stay home and watch online. Don't even ask me why. But Deacon, why? You know why. You know what I mean? If I tell any one of you all to stay home and watch online, you know why. Don't ask me why. Because I ain't got no time for no foolishness, man. Here, here we trying. It's us against the world. We got BBC attacking us. We got evil Israelite camps attacking us. And then you got brothers and sisters amongst us where we got to be watching them sideways. Because they ass is, they behind is evil as hell. Yo, listen, when I get angry, some words just come out. That's what just happened. I'm sorry, okay? You in the spirit, though, I'm Deacon. sorry. I know I don't supposed <laughs> to say it, you know? I'm sorry. But that's what has happened, man. You know what I mean? But you brothers and sisters, you're holy line and you all stay faithful, man. You all stay faithful. You know, you all going to see these prophecies coming to pass. You're going to see the things written in this Bible coming to pass, man. This is, that's why Esau trying to shut us down. You know, that's why they want to stop us. Because the stuff that, that we are bringing out in the scriptures, guess what? It's coming to pass and the people are seeing it. You feel what I'm saying? We are a threat to this society through the scriptures and the things that we are bringing out, man. You know, so you brothers, you all learn this Bible. You all make sure you all learn this Bible. You understand? You all don't just come here and just, okay, um, you know, like you're going to Sunday school. No, you got to learn this. The same way how I learn, the bishop, learn it from the bishop. When he was teaching me, I make sure I took my notes and I understand for myself. That's why I was able to teach you all what I teach you, taught you all today. You feel what I'm saying? It's the same way you men got to make sure you understand. So you could teach other men also. You only come up inside there to sit down and play Sunday school, man. As I tell you, some of you men, I'm going to just be telling you 
Some of you brothers and sisters are going to tell you, oh, stay online. Stay home and watch online. That's what I'm going to say, yo. Don't even ask me why when I want to tell you that. Stay home and watch online. You know? We ain't got no time for no foolishness. We are war. You know? Anyways, let me done that now, all right? Let's um, shut it down. Uh -huh. No announcement for online? Yeah, there's one more. One more. All right. As you all know, there's going to be a fashion show during Passover. So, if y'all sisters are interested, this is the email you want to uh, send your information to. Fashion, that you're interested. Fashion show at israelunite.org. Fashion show at israelunite.org. If y'all are interested in participating in the fashion show. Okay, I make sure you all doing, you all can literally sew. Don't come with no whack stuff, you know. <laughs> I have to let you all know. <laughs> yes, and the the brothers and the the um the brothers and sisters that took part for the fashion show for the concert, they they stuff was off the chain. You know that sister um what's that sister that sister that did that? She from Miami, man. She bad. You know what I mean? You see the glass all over that and so forth. You know, so make sure you're coming with some skills, man. You feel me? Because there will be what you call, uh, uh, what you call it, like when you're making sure that they get something right. Like, no, 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 no. Like you all got to clear, what you call, man, when you clear something? No, they, approval, yeah. Your stuff going to be, got to be approved, man. Pre-approved. <laughs> Pre-approved. <laughs> you understand? For real. So those of you all that was at the, um, at the concert, you all, you all had a little glimpse uh, of what the sisters and them skills, the sisters and them skills, man. And that ain't even, uh, that ain't even a fraction of the sisters that got skills. You know, because they got a couple sisters that they couldn't make it. And I know they got crazy skills. You know what I mean? So you all oh, sign up, man. It says the instructions right here. Please email fashionshow at israelunite.org with your name, design company name, and yours and your lord's name if married your email phone number and what iuic school you are with so those are the instructions for those that are interested okay all praises so we a few weeks away from passover a few weeks i mean all right, a month and some change okay <laughs> all right man so let's let's shut it down online you understand um let's get the bread and break the bread Again, you all send out the prayers for the prophets and them in Puerto Rico and show the Caribbean islands that's out there on the quest, that's pushing the word. You all pray for the bishop, pray for the captains and the officers that's out there, that's laboring. You know, you all send up the prayers for the most High to have mercy upon all of us, all the brothers that's out there teaching and laboring and for the most High to protect us. You know, you all always do that, man. Send up prayers for the most High to to protect us, man, to protect the bishop when he's doing the things he's doing. You understand what I'm saying? It's not a simple thing to go before a vice president and speak. You feel me? You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of threats and, and it's a lot of Satan is after all of us. So the scripture said we must pray for each other. You know what I mean? So you brothers and sisters, you all do that. Let's pray for each other on the regular. Pray for the bishop. Pray for the captains. You know what I mean? Pray for the deacons. Pray for the officers. Let's pray for each other. Pray for the soldiers. Because you never know what somebody might be going through, man. You know? All right? This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this, cu this, cup is the new this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink, as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, 
ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Through this we pray, Amen. Men of Israel, are you ready? ready. Are you ready? ready. Faith, patient, salvation. Faith, patient, salvation. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word, his word, his word.